Hey, this is Reverend Dr. Marisha, your Linus Queen. Happy New Year. Happy New You in 2022. I'm so, I am so excited, so excited. Um, God dropped in my spirit in the beginning of this year to um, have morning manna on Saturdays um, to provide encouraging and empowering messages for you to embrace the worth of your crown. And I'm just so excited about what God is going to do new in you and in me. I truly believe if you have if you've been following me on my podcast, the Lion is Queen podcast, it's on every platform. Please subscribe. I mean, there it, I'm telling you, it's a lot of information, um, a lot of inspirational messages that uh, have blessed me just sharing them with you as God gives them to me. And so I'm so excited again, what God is going to do. So today we're going to talk about how negativity um, can inhibit what I would say God's love for us. And so I don't know if you um, have experienced rejection in a way where oftentimes when one has been rejected, it's easy for you to reject others. And, and also reject God's love. And so I always love starting out with a quote or a poem, even in my podcast, I love doing that. And I found one on Twitter and the quote says, when you replace why, why is this happening to me with what is this trying to teach me? Everything shifts. <laughs> Woo, that's powerful. Let me say that again. Uh, here it is. Um, when you replace, why is this happening to me? With what is this trying to teach me? Everything shifts. I'm telling you, this right here, <laughs> this is powerful. Um, I truly believe it's so easy for us to, when we experience trauma, when we experience the negative event that happens in our life, it's very easy for us to say why. It's very easy for us to say, and even ask the Lord, why is this happening to me? Um, I know I did it when I experienced my divorce. Um, I, and I just remember um, when my ex had told me he didn't want, want to be in the marriage anymore after us being together for 24 years, that was a huge question for me. Why God, like why, you know, and I was very bold in asking the Lord that question, which, you know, we have no authority, you know, to question what God is doing in our lives and in, in whatever season we are in, you know, um, and I almost felt like God had given me the wrong assignment. That's kind of how I felt. He gave me the wrong assignment. Like I felt as if this was not supposed to be on my plate. I, I felt like God was punishing me in a certain way, you know, and I literally concocted in my mindset, like all of these different excuses as to you made a mistake. God, you made a mistake. All of this negativity happened um after i experienced trauma you know that rejection and i'm pretty sure you felt that way in your life or you're feeling that way right now you feel like god made a mistake like god you weren't supposed to do this like almost as if god forgot about you and you know, God never sleeps. He never slumbers. And we forget. One thing I, I believe that we easily forget is his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we can't question the one who created everything in our lives. We just we just can't. He's alpha. He's omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's all wise. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's everywhere. And, and we don't really we don't have the authority to question God in that sense, you know? Um, and so how and why, you know, the question is, I always like, well, 
it's something that we do and we do often. <laughs> we do it often. But why do we feel so entitled? Why do we feel so entitled to know what God is doing in our lives with everything? And we we want to be in the know, you know. God is the author and finisher of our faith, but we feel entitled in a way. And definitely there's an entitlement that we can have as being, you know, sons and daughters of a king. And it's easy to do, (laughs) you know, you know, some of us, um, you know, even with our natural parents, we've done that. Well, daddy, why? Well, mommy, why? You know, that's the question, you know, you see always little kids and the parent will say, what? Don't ask me why. Don't the, the parent will easily say, don't ask me why, because a parent knows best. A father knows best. A mother knows best. Ooh, that, got, ooh, that, got, that gave me chills right there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A father knows best. God knows best, you know. And so uh, we have to trust in what they know. Our parents know. But we also have to trust what God knows, you know. And so God is like, don't, you don't, don't question, don't ask me why. Don't question my authority because I know what's best for you. You know, so we like, so we need to make the adjustment. We need to stop questioning and start believing no matter what comes our way, no matter what life throws on our plate. And I was thinking about the second part of that quote relates to the lesson. What do we learn? There was a teachable moment there, right? That we were supposed to grab hold of and figure out the lesson, you know? Um, But it's hard to learn a lesson when all you see is the negativity, you know, because that is something that you are holding on to. You know, it's like you can't really hold, you can't hold on to your past and your future at the same time. You got to let one go. And the question is, which one are you going to focus more on? And actually, I thought for myself with the divorce, I thought the lesson um, was, and this was before he wanted the divorce, I thought the lesson was, okay, God, you're doing something in me. You're doing something in him so that we can come back together and be whole and be better and be a better, you know, power couple. That was, that's kind of what I thought the lesson was, you know, um, I thought God was trying to teach me patience in the storm while my ex-husband needed time to kind of you know, figure things out and get himself together with whatever he was dealing with so we could still happily have happily ever after. But again, God's ways are not our ways. And um, that was challenging for me to really work through. And I'm pretty sure you've experienced something that's been challenging for you to work through where those negative, those negative looping thoughts just sent you in a tunnel that you didn't know how to get out of, you know? Um, But, you know, Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together. All things work together for the good of them who love God. And I thought, you know, all things were working together so that we could come back together. But sometimes God has something greater for you. And we're oftentimes looking for it. And when we don't see it, that's when the negativity arises in us because we don't see it in the natural. But God is always doing something behind the scenes. God is always doing something in the spiritual realm. And so think about it for yourself. Can you identify, you know, a lesson that God wanted you to learn? And sometimes he gives he gives us that same thing over and over because we didn't learn the lesson the first time. And oftentimes we we fail to believe and understand that there's always a lesson in everything that we go through, good, bad, and indifferent, because God expects growth from you. He expects you to grow. He expects you to be better than what you were yesterday, last week, last month, and last year. And so for myself, God wanted 
he wanted to do some things in me. And I didn't know what those things, you know, I didn't know what those things were. But, you know, I know Tyler Perry typically says in his movies, when a person shows you who they are, believe them or believe it. Because words are cheap, but behavior shows who they really are. Behavior, behavior shows you things, you know. Now, we, we can we can believe in potential. And I know a lot of people go into relationships because we see potential in others, you know, um, and maybe you married, you're married to someone who you love their potential and who they could be. But you got to understand potential isn't enough. You know, potential, it doesn't pay the bills. Potential doesn't know how to be the priest of your home. You know, potential doesn't understand that your marriage is your first ministry. Potential doesn't understand that, you know, you leave your parents and cleave to your spouse. Potential, you know, doesn't quit jobs because, you know, a coworker talked to them wrong or their parents or, or, or the supervisor talked to them wrong. You know, potential doesn't to hang out with their single friends all night long, every week, week after week. Potential, you know, doesn't, I would say, spend multiple days, let me say, in, in church, you know, morning, noon, and night, you know, versus being home with your family. That, that potential, you know, doesn't make go out and make big purchases without sitting down and consulting their spouse first. Potential doesn't abuse right? Their bodies with alcohol and drugs without, you know, really coming to repentance. Potential doesn't allow one spouse to do all the work. <laughs> I mean, potential, potential, potential isn't enough. And I'm, I'm sorry, I chased that rabbit, but I truly believe a lot of us go into relationships because we see potential and we don't see who they are in that moment at that time. But you need to see some things before you make a decision, especially to marry someone. Potential isn't enough. Sometimes we also think we can change people because we see their potential. Oh, we can help them, but you can't change anyone but yourself. And actually potential, you know, the potential that we're so, we see in others doesn't necessarily mean that they will activate it. You know, you may you may be able to tell them, hey, ooh, you have potential in X, Y, and Z, but doesn't that does you can't activate it. They have to activate, activate it on their own. It's not your job to be a superman or superwoman to try to pull things out of people. You know, I'm I'm sure, you know, there's some examples, you know, you saw um in a relationship before, right? And and you realized. Oh, wow. Uh, I saw more potential in them than they did, you know, but. And I saw potential in my ex-husband, but again, in the same regard, you got you have to realize you can't change people. People have to want to change for themselves. And, and and that was the lesson for me, you know, um, and so think about what the lesson is for you. But God wants us to learn the lesson. and. I truly believe that when we are so hyper focused on our negativity, God is He is continually, He's always trying to show His love to us all the time, 365 days of the week. He's always trying to show His love, sometimes in big ways, sometimes in small ways, but because uh, of the negativity that we have planted in our mindset. It inhibits us from receiving God's love. And God wants us to heal. He wants us to be whole. You know, so whatever your wound is, whatever you're, you've experienced that is stopping you from going to that next level, just know that God is trying to love you through it. You know, um, he's trying to love you through that process. It's a healing process. You know, healing takes time. But again, when all you think about is what someone did to you, you can never, you can't 
be open to receive God's love because you have a focus. It's not on him. It's on what that thing is in your life. And so what is that thing today? I'm pretty sure you know what that thing is, you know. Um, And God wants you to shift. It's time for everything to shift. And shift in a way where you are open to God's love and embracing God's love. Don't stop rejecting God's love today. You know, I remember I had to get to that point um, for myself with after the after you know my ex said he wanted to get a divorce. I had to get to a place where I had to let that go, holding on to the rejection, and get to a place where okay, it's just you and me, God, in this season. I had to get to that place where he could love, love, and love, love on me. You know, I always knew God loved me. And, and, you know, when you're in the, when you're not in the valley, you know, God loves you like you, you know, but when you're in that valley, it's hard to, to, to see his love and feel his love because of what you're thinking, what your mindset is thinking. And, you know, I challenge you today. I challenge you today to shift. Stop inhibiting, stop blocking from receiving and being open to receive God's love, you know. Um, And then also through that process, as God is healing your heart, God will help you work through that pain. God will help you to forgive the person who hurt you. God will help you to forgive the person who abandoned you, the person who abused you, the person who slandered your name, the person who you feel forgot about you. Maybe your parents show favoritism in the family and you felt like the least of these. Whatever the case may be, God can heal that wound through his love because he loves you. You know, I it's interesting when you're a child and you grow up and you know you know you grow up in the church and you really you don't really you know you you learn God through your parents in a way but there gets a point in time when you become an adult and you have experiences you got to learn God for yourself you got to you got to learn how to believe in him for yourself you have to learn how to trust in who he says he is for yourself It's not my mama, it's not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And when you get to that place, God will show you who he is. He will show up for the showdown. He will be your present help in the time of need. And so God wanted to get me to shift, to focus on him. Now, it's a process I have to say, because when you've been hurt, when someone hurts you, you want to hold on to that thing so bad. But you can't hold on to your past and your future at the same time. And, and God wanted to, he was, it was time for me to move. And so for my lesson, I had to realize that it was time for me to go to another level. It was time for my life to shift and change and to walk in the calling that God destined me to be in. And I know that's not my own destiny. I know it's yours too. God is calling you to greater. God is calling you to higher heights, but he needs you to let the past go and embrace the future. You got to keep moving. You got to keep pushing forward. You got to keep putting one step in front of the other. You know, it, 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 (laughs) <laughs> it's a hard, I keep saying that it's a challenging process, but why is it challenging? Why do I keep saying that? I keep saying that because it requires you to do work. It requires you to do inner work in you. You have to do the work first in order to understand. 
And so my motto is all about being residue free. If you follow me, my motto is all about being residue free. And God wants you to be residue free today. That is what he wants. He wants you to release the residue. And what are you saying? What are you saying, Lioness Queen? Release your past today. That is the call that God wants you to do in order to begin to heal that wound that is on the inside of you. You know, John 3, 16, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave up his treasure for you and for me. And it and it and, and it's not so that we can be the same person we we've been the past 10 years. He sent his only begotten son so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And that means what? Releasing the residue and embracing what God is going to do new, new in you in 2022. And I believe that today for you. And I pray you believe that for yourself, that God is going to do something new in you in 2022. But you got to let go of the past in order to embrace where God is taking you. I truly believe the negative mindset, it just limits. It limits how we experience God's love. It limits how we are open to receiving God's love. And in a nutshell, it's all about how we we internalize and process the trauma, whatever you went through. You know, through a lens of, of, of your pain, a lens of turmoil, a lens of anguish, a lens of loss, a lens of infidelity, a lens of hate, abuse, trauma. It has the ability to misconstrue God's love. And when all, when you focus on the negativity, it leads to self-defeating thoughts, self-defeating behaviors, and it leads to destruction. The enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. Destroy your mindset. But today, God loves you. God loves you more than you know. There's nothing that you could have done that can stop God's love. Don't let the enemy bring up your past. Don't let the enemy bring up your mistakes. No matter what it is, It's already been taken care of on the cross because that's why he sent his son for you. He knew you could not do it within yourself. And he still loves you. God's love, uh, we cannot, we cannot negate and misconstrue his love in a way that allows strongholds to block us from receiving his love, his unconditional love. It's not that, it's not, it's not that God is not giving or showing the love, but it's our mindset that is blocking us from being that from having that channel open to receive it. Let's believe that today. Let's believe that God can heal our wounds and that God loves us. He loves the I don't know what out of you. And there's nothing you can do to stop his unfailing love. And so today I want you to to do an exercise. I want you to do uh, an exercise. And I just want you to write down all of the things, all of the things you think God loves about you. And and I want you to write down all of, and, 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 and when you do that, I don't want you to forget to write down your flaws. Because God loves your flaws. But write down, I want you to create a laundry list of all of the things that God loves about you. And when you look at that list and you get stuck, then I want you to write down all of the things where God is taking you. You may not be in that season yet, but all of your dreams, your goals, your things, uh, that next step, that next place, that next chapter that you are looking toward, write those things down because God loves that too. He's already seen it in the supernatural. He's just waiting for you to catch up. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to catch up. So position yourself today to be open to receive God's love because God is ready. 
in this new year for a new you in 2022. Amen and amen.